你说的对，习近平主席全票当选了国家主席，这充分反映了全党、全军、全国各族人民的共同心愿，充分体现了党的意志、人民的意志、国家意志的高度统一，是党心所向、民心所盼、众望所归。嗯，我想这个对于中国的发展，对于全面推进中华民族伟大复兴是具有重要意义的。呃，你关心中国的对外政策，包括中美关系，我可以告诉你的是，中国始终奉行独立自主的和平外交政策。我们将继续根据和平共处、合作共赢，呃，相互尊重、和平共处、合作共赢的原则看待和发展中美关系。希望美方也能同中方相向而行，推动中美关系重回健康稳定的轨道。中国人民。也绝不允许任何外来势力欺负、压迫、奴役我们。谁妄想这样干，必将在十四多亿中国人民用血肉铸成的钢铁长城面前碰得头破血流。In the late 20th century, China, a nation rich in history, embarked on its enormous journey of economic development. China's story is one of resilience, reform and rapid expansion, from a closed and centrally controlled economy to a worldwide economic powerhouse. In the late 1970s, under the leadership of Deng Xiaoping, China started a series of economic reforms and opened its door to the rest of the globe. SEZs, or Special Economic Zones, were created to encourage foreign investment and private entrepreneurship. These reforms sparked the entrepreneurial spirit in China, driving it from an agrarian civilization to an industrialized nation. Collective farming gave way to market-oriented agriculture, and state-owned industries were restructured. As the 20th century came to an end, China's economy continued to grow. This age was defined by rapid urbanization, infrastructure development, and a growing middle class. The country earned the title of World's Factory as it dominated worldwide manufacturing and export markets. The Ministerial Conference so agrees. China's admission to the World Trade Organization offered up new trade opportunities, driving the country farther into the global economic spotlight. China's economic landscape transformed once more in the 21st century. The country's focus moved from being the world's factory to becoming a center for innovation and technology. Strategic programs such as Made in China 2025 sought to position China as a global leader in high-tech industries. The idea of the Belt and Road Initiative was to develop connectivities between China. And the global south, the bulk of Belt and Road financing has gone into hard infrastructure sectors such as transportation, energy,、uh, mining, and、uh, projects of that sort. But China has now also folded a lot of their cultural initiatives, their educational initiatives, scholarships, Confucius Institutes, and others into this big、uh, juggernaut of the Belt and Road Initiative. China's Belt and Road Initiative increased its economic impact around the world by encouraging international collaboration in infrastructure development. While China has achieved remarkable economic success, it is currently dealing with new problems: trade disputes with neighboring countries, an aging population, and environmental sustainability. Are all key challenges that must be addressed strategically.
in China, where U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo is discussing concerns about restrictions on American businesses, including the chip makers Intel and Micron. Well, Secretary Raimondo's visit comes at a time of increasing concern over the slowdown in China's economy, as you were just hearing there. So global investors have already pulled out more than $10 billion from China's stock markets. China is actively addressing these difficulties through green programs, technical developments and long-term growth goals demonstrating a commitment to a more balanced and harmonious future. China's economic history demonstrates its resilience and adaptability. The road from the era of reform and opening up to becoming a global economic giant continues. As China faces modern challenges, its commitment to innovation, sustainability, and global cooperation sets the groundwork for a future that reaches well beyond its borders. China's economy grew by a better-than-expected 4.5% on-year in the first quarter. This is mainly due to a strong recovery in consumption after the country lifted its strict zero-COVID measures at the end of last year. China's GDP in the first three quarters of 2023 reached a total of RMB 91.3 trillion, approximately 12.48 trillion US dollars, growing 5.2% year on year. In the third quarter alone, the year on year GDP growth rate reached 4.9%, beating the median forecast of around 4.6%. Primary industry in China includes farming, forestry, animal husbandry and fishery and accounts that cover 9% of the country's GDP. This also includes the secondary sector that consists of industry and construction. And the tertiary sector consisting of wholesale and retail trades, transport, storage and post-financial intermediation. China's economic development has been fueled in large part by a sprawling industrial sector that means the country's economic size and rapid growth are not the only thing that set it apart. Service industry added value grew by 6% in the first three quarters of 2023. High growth rates were recorded across multiple sectors such as hospitality and catering, information transmission, software and information technology, leasing and business services, transport, warehouse and postal services, financial services. China's export-heavy model of economic growth leaves less room for consumption-led growth. This is markedly different from most advanced economies, where domestic consumption is the main driver of economic growth. In 2021, consumption accounted for just 54% of China's GDP, while in the United States and the United Kingdom, that figure was above 80%. Recent trends show that China is not closing that gap. In fact, consumption as a percent of GDP in China has fallen considerably over the last two decades. Fixed Asset Investments or FAI in the first three quarters of 2023 is also recovering. With total FAI growing 3.1% year-on-year to reach RMB 37.5 trillion, or 5.13 trillion US dollars. FAI in the industrial sector saw strong growth up to 9% year on year, while investment in the services sector grew by 0.7% year on year. In September, FAI grew by 0.15% from the previous month. Uh, 
uh, we actually find it increasingly likely that China will be able to deliver innovation. All the preconditions are there. There is ample government support, uh, especially with uh, innovation-friendly taxation, ample venture capital funding, uh, there is a large, cheap and educated workforce, uh, R&D research and development and IP intellectual property production are both um, increasing. In 2021, general government total expenditure for China was 32.7%. General government total expenditure of China increased from 18.5% in 2002 to 32.7% in 2021, growing at an average annual rate of 3.26%. As per the GAC, which released China's trade data, China's total foreign trade in RMB terms reached RMB 30.8 trillion for the first three quarters of 2023, with a slight contradiction of 0.2% year on year. In the month of September, imports and exports reached RMB 3.74 trillion, which is the highest monthly volume in 2023 so far. As of October 2023, China's international trade in goods and services demonstrates continued economic activity. In renminbi or RMB terms, the total trade volume reached RMB 4,091 billion, with exports totaling RMB 1,961.5 billion and imports at RMB 1,634.9 billion, resulting in a surplus of RMB 326.6 billion. The export of services amounted to RMB 177.7 billion, while service imports were RMB 316.8 billion, leading to a deficit of RMB 139.1 billion. Major contributors to this trade activity included transport, travel, other business services and telecommunications, computer and information services. In U.S. dollar terms, the international trade amounted to 298 billion U.S. dollar and 271.9 billion U.S. dollar, resulting in a surplus of 26.1 billion U.S. dollars. These data highlights China's substantial role in the global trade arena, showcasing both a strength in exports and a surplus in international trade. The U.S. remained a primary destination for Chinese exports, reflecting a substantial volume of goods shipped across various sectors. Hong Kong continues to serve as a major trading partner for China, with a significant portion of exports directed to this global financial hub. Japan remained a key market for Chinese exports, emphasizing the strong economic ties between the two Asian nations. China's exports to South Korea remained substantial, underlining the economic cooperation and trade between the two neighbors. Vietnam emerged as a significant destination for Chinese exports, indicating the growing economic links between the two countries. China's Top Import Origins Taiwan was a major source of imports for China in October 2023, reflecting the economic interconnectedness between the two entities. China continued to import goods from South Korea, indicating the importance of this East Asian neighbor in China's supply chain. Imports from Japan remained substantial, highlighting ongoing economic collaboration and trade activities. The U.S. also played a significant role as a source of imports for China, reflecting the complexity and diversity of their trade relationship. Australia continued to be a notable contributor to China's imports, particularly in terms of natural resources and commodities. China's major exports are the following. Electrical machinery and equipment. Machinery including computers, furniture, bedding, lighting, signs, and prefabricated buildings. 
plastic and plastic articles, vehicles, toys and games, optical, technical, and medical apparatuses, articles of iron and steel, clothing and accessories, organic chemicals. China's major imports are the following. Electrical machinery and equipment. Mineral fuels. Ores. Machinery including computers. Gems and precious metals. Optical, technical, and medical apparatuses. Vehicles. Plastics and plastic articles. Copper. Oil seeds. These three dynamics showcase the intricate nature of China's global economic engagement, emphasizing its role as a major player in both exports and imports across a diverse range of products and with a variety of trading partners. The data also highlights the impact of global economic trends and specific shifts in demand for certain goods. China's Government Policies These policies are implemented by the Chinese government to support businesses and attract foreign investment. An example of this is the preferential tax policy. The State Council decided to extend preferential tax policies with a focus on supporting small and low-profit companies as well as key industries. These policies include tax deductions for research and development expenses and reduced income tax rates for small, low-profile enterprises and sole proprietors. The goal is to alleviate the financial burden on eligible companies with an expected reduction in the annual tax and fee burden by more than RMB 480 billion. Another example of these policies is the local government initiatives, where provincial and municipal governments such as Shanghai have released plans to support businesses. Shanghai, as an example, has introduced several measures to attract foreign direct investment and improve the overall business environment. The focus is on boosting business confidence in key economic centers like Shanghai. These policies reflect the Chinese government's effort to stimulate economic growth, especially in the aftermath of economic challenges and global uncertainties. By providing tax incentives and creating a favorable business environment, China aims to support both domestic enterprises and attract foreign investors. These initiatives align with broader economic strategies to promote innovation, sustainability, and overall economic development. To stimulate economic growth and meet the targeted around 5% GDP growth, the Chinese government plans to roll out a stimulus package similar to what was seen in 2020. A state council meeting on June 16 emphasized the need for more forceful measures to enhance development momentum, optimize economic structure, and promote continuous economy recovery. The proposed policy measures included increasing macro policy regulation intensity, expanding effective demand, strengthening the real economy, and preventing risks in key areas. Last but not the least is the monetary and fiscal policy. In 2023, the Chinese government and central bank continues to adapt a cautious economic approach. The Ministry of Finance, or MOF, announced in January a plan to moderately expand fiscal spending with a focus on boosting consumption, 
enhancing food security, and supporting technological development. On June 15, the People's Bank of China, or PBOC, took measures to inject more liquidity into the markets. This included a 10 basis point cut in the borrowing rate of RMB 237 billion worth of loans through the medium-term lending facility, reducing it from 2.75% to 2.65%. State-owned commercial banks also lowered interest rates on RMB deposits in the preceding week, aimed at reducing overall lending costs. Subsequently, on June 19, the PBOC further lowered the one-year loan prime rate from 3.65% to 3.55% and the 5-year LPR from 4.3% to 4.2%. These LPR cuts were implemented to lower borrowing costs and stimulate consumption, aligning with the government's effort to support economic recovery. Overall, these measures reflect a coordinated approach by the government and central bank to navigate economic challenges, injecting liquidity, reducing borrowing costs, and encouraging consumption to promote sustainable growth in 2023. China's economic growth has been nothing short of remarkable. As we move into the next decade, experts anticipate continued expansion, although at a potentially slower pace. By 2030, China is projected to have an economy six times that of Japan. Factors such as maturing industries and environmental concerns may play a role in shaping the economic landscape. A significant driver of China's economic prowess lies in its commitment to technological advancements. Initiatives like Made in China 2025 underscore the nation's ambition to lead in AI, electric vehicles, and high-tech manufacturing. These innovations could be pivotal in sustaining economic growth. Demographics tell a crucial story. China grapples with an aging population and a shrinking workforce. Navigating these challenges will be essential to maintaining economic stability in the face of changing labor dynamics and social welfare demands. China's economic fate is intricately tied to the global stage. Trade tensions and geopolitical shifts can impact international trade and economic stability. How China navigates these diplomatic waters will significantly shape its economic future. Recognizing the importance of environmental issues, China is making strides towards a more sustainable development model. Balancing economic growth with environmental consciousness is a key consideration for the nation's future. The stability of China's currency and financial market is paramount. Reforms in these areas can influence both domestic and international investor confidence, playing a pivotal role in the country's economic outlook. Imagine this, a global marketplace where the movement of goods and services transcends borders, creating a delicate dance of interconnected economies. Just as a single pebble creates ripples across a pond, shifts in trade balances sends reverberations through the world market. 
From the bustling streets in the U.S. to the productive markets of China, every nation plays a role in this grand symphony of exchange. In the grand theater of trade, every nation is a player. Each transaction is a line in the script. Think of the interconnectedness of trade balances in the world market as the beating heart of our global community. It's like a dance where nations hold hands, each relying on each other for a harmonious rhythm of prosperity. When one partner falters, the entire dance feels the stumble affecting currencies, job opportunities, and the overall well-being of people worldwide. This interdependence encourages nations to be like supportive friends, collaborating and finding common ground to keep the dance going smoothly. So imagine our world economy as a shared journey where maintaining balance isn't just an economic concept, but a collective effort to ensure the well-being of individuals across the borders. Thank you.